right, let's call the May 23rd Architecture Review Board meeting to order. Uh, Steve, if you could read the roll, please. Sure. Bob Heimroll. Here. Dave Alding. Here. Jerry Jones. Here. Joe Clark. Here. Dick Lindy. Here. And uh, Pam Langan said she was not going to be here, and Marcus is no longer with us. Right. And we have a quorum, so let's proceed. If we uh, could all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Any potential conflicts of interest for today's meeting? <laughs> Bob is so signifying and showed up to make sure we had a quorum, so thank you for that. Uh, item four. Approval of minutes from the May 9th meeting. Move to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> minutes are approved. Thank you. Which brings us to our one item of business for today. The um, change in design proposed for construction at the uh, riverfront condominiums along South South Pier District. Um, if your team can come to the podium and just give us a brief description, but first I'm gonna ask Steve just to give us a quick synopsis of where we are and which guidelines do and don't apply. Oh, geez, I just closed this down. Perfect. <laughs> so so it, it, many are you fam familiar with the site. We're on the South Pier District. Um, Mr. Watson had uh, uh, previously developed the initial South Pier riverfront condos. So basically you have the rice coal condominiums, then the first phase of this project. Um, I think it was about maybe fall of last year that we had approved this particular phase. And um, I'll let the applicant speak to in terms of the uh, challenges they had and the, re and the reason why you have the redesign before you today. Obviously this is in the South Pier and there are certain guidelines. Um, this is kind of in an area that was considered like the office area because it was formerly the rice coal, everything up to about the fish shanty area. And then the shanties have very specific regulations. The interior has pretty specific regulations, but this section didn't have a lot in terms of spe specifics like the others do because it was looked at as a parking lot and the rice coal facility. So um, what we're trying to do is be consistent in terms of what we've previously done, what's been done uh, by the applicant as well as the rice coal office condominium building. And so we're just trying to be consistent with that and that's where we're at and the applicant has brought um, new drawings to be reviewed by the board today. And with that, I guess I can turn it to Bill. Thank you, Steve. If we can. Thank you, Steve. Yeah. So maybe I'll start with a little bit about where we were and where we are now. Where we were and what we originally had talked about uh, when we came before your board before was that we we're going to be doing two buildings which were going to be very similar in design. They were going to be the same height, roughly, um, the same exterior, just a smaller footprint because of the lot size. And we were going to end up with about 12 to 15 units uh, on this lot. What happened was is that we took time to be able to go through that process. We had designs all written up and ready to go, had them even state approved, and then we came into the bid process. Everybody knows what happened with COVID, and what we found is that we were 18 months out before we could even get elevators. We were 18 months out before we get Spancrete, and our prices had like tripled and quadrupled on some of the uh, materials, not to mention the contractors themselves. We couldn't source them to even build it. So it became not feasible to build the building. I would have lost money on every unit we would have uh, built. So we couldn't do it. So we scrapped the plan completely, went back to the drawing board with the abacus uh, ladies and gents, and uh, came up with a different townhouse style. Somewhat mirrored off of what they did at the Kingsbury uh, Brewery, which was a beautiful design that I liked when I drove past. So we ended up using almost the same footprint, or a slightly smaller, we ended up going with six units instead of like the 12 uh, units, but our price point has gone up considerably because of the building cost and the square footage that we're getting with these now. So as far as what we planned on doing with this lot, which would have been about 
I'm going from memory, but I think it was about four and a half million dollars, 4.6, somewhere in that neighborhood. Uh, with the building that we were proposing, now we're gonna be right about that $3 million mark uh, from the get-go. Uh, I think they'll go up, but we'll be somewhere in that neighborhood. The other things that we took in consideration is that when we came before uh, the board before, they said that this is kind of a transitional lot, that we're coming from the Rice Coal Company building, which is a four-story building, down to the Fish Shanty, which is a single story. There's some across the street that are two, two and a half stories, which uh, Joe has the, the portscape. And originally you'd ask, could we build this building as a three-story building instead of four, like the first uh, building that we had built? Um, we didn't think we could do that because we were gonna need the number of units in order to actually make money on it, otherwise we wouldn't have been able to do that. Now because we didn't do the spancrete, we're not doing the elevator systems, we're not doing pylons going all the way down, we're saving a considerable amount of money, now I can lower the building down to a three-story building. So it became actually a better design because we're going from a higher building to a little bit lower, which is what this building will be, down to the fish shanty as it kind of steps back down. We also try to incorporate some of the different materials. So you'll notice um, before you, um, one of the drawings, you can kind of almost see the taller rice coal building stepping down as it goes down and transitions. But we're also transitioning our building materials where we have the, the lap siding here, which is what we're doing in this building. If you remember, the first building actually used a, um, a cement board siding, which was a little bit more of a flat panel type siding, um, and then incorporated that with the, um, the rice coal building. On this building, we're gonna be using um, more of the lap siding, the same brickwork, the same color theme. We uh, tried to create the same bump outs, the same windows, the same color windows, the same uh, um, spiral staircases, the same railings. So it really does look like it's a uniform project you know, between the two buildings. But yet we're creating just a few elements from some of the other buildings uh, that are down there, trying to be more of a transitional building. Uh, we're not uh, having a, um, a real bad parking impact. We're actually having two car garages for everybody's unit. We're actually adding another three parking stalls to the development, which we don't even need to, but it's just additional parking. Uh, we're pleasantly surprised at, uh, I shouldn't say surprised, but we're ha pleasantly happy that building one, if you notice when you drive down there, you don't see that front parking area filled hardly ever. The Rice Coal Company you know, uh, condos are very happy because they gained a couple spaces between our buildings which was actually on our lot that they're allowed to use them. So it really is a win-win right now so far. I know one of the concerns that the, uh, the board had when we came before uh, a couple of years back was that we really didn't want to have garage doors just facing uh, the drive. And, and we understood that that was one of the reasons that we did the single garage door for the other building. Unfortunately with this, we can't do uh, feasibly the, the the uh, cement uh, spancrete and create just one parking structure and then build uh, a top of it. So what we did try to do is at least set back the garages so they're not just flush, they're actually set back recess so they're hidden a little bit within the building design. It's a little hard to maybe tell on this, but with the garages here, they're the same color, they're kind of blending into some of the glass. We added glass into the garages to try to create more of just a kind of a front door-ish uh, kind of look to it. Um, obviously, we got some landscaping between each one to try to break that up as well. Um, and again, just back setting them a little bit. Um, having said that, we also went with the darker color. This building has actually an aluminum garage door, which stands out a bit more. So when you drive past, you see it. Um, whereas this, I think, just kind of blends in a little bit um, nicer. What am I? Yeah, come on. Yeah, feel free. Uh, Eric Fleischman with Abacus Architects. Uh, just to add on that a little bit, um, the bottom kind of four panels on the garage doors are opaque, so there's only glass on the top to kind of, again, really diminish a, a garage look on the front street. Um, I guess, did you guys have any questions about the design? Um, I, I think I'll also add Due to budgetary reasons, we also went with a thin brick on the kind of wainscot, that lower band, because um, it would require a different foundation and it makes a heavier building. So in order to kind of get this building built and feasible, we, we found another product, a thin brick, that uh, is a really good product if you, you have the right backing to it. Um, it's, it's, it's literally, 
a full brick that gets sliced up into smaller pieces. And so it has the same quality and durability as kind of a regular brick, but not, not the cost. So that was one aspect that we, we kind of incorporated into this new design. Um, and aesthetically, it looks the same. I mean, real close to the same to the other building. So we're keeping a lot of the same design elements, um, you know, the cement posts that are on the back of the building, the same verticals, um, the same gutter type systems. So we're really, again, tying the two buildings very much uh, in a similar design. Questions? Yes, from, from my standpoint, it's a pretty slick looking building. I like it. Yeah, uh, streamlined. Um, was initially not sure how it fit with the whole South Pier, but the fact that the guidelines don't kick in here quite the same way they do further down, um, I'm not seeing anything that jumps out at me as a, you shouldn't be doing this. Yeah. Um, I did have just a few questions. One is the, the roof access. You had a, a rail area. What's, what's happening up on the roof? Sure, it's, um, go ahead, if you want to discuss oh. it, it's just a... If you, Steve, if you could go to the individual floor plans, I think it's the Watson, yeah, that one. So this, is, we're gonna consider this a penthouse, so it's not a floor, but it's rather just access to the roof. Um, on the previous design, we did have mechanical units up there, so um, I guess it's how you interpret penthouse, but. The idea is that it's just a landing and a patio space um, that Toby could come up to on his unit um, and under occupant load of about 20 uh, that we could call it a penthouse, not a level, but rather just a penthouse um, so that we're staying under that um, three levels. There's also, um, we, on discussion with Pat, uh, I forgot Pat's last name. Eric. Eric. Yeah, yes. Building uh, thanks. We will need to sprinkler this building, and um, with that said, there will be, like construction-wise, there will be less rated walls or a lower-rated wall system because of that. So we we're that's something that's going to be kind of uh, revised and before we send it into the state. But I'm in discussions. We're in discussions with Pat on on the sprinkler issue um, so that he and the fire marshal feel comfortable with how they get a ladder up to the, each respective patio. Um, so we're working that out. It's just kind of related to the patio yeah. that we're shown here. So I just want to mention that. And part of that patio too is that we know that, again, having owned you know, 30 of the buildings downtown, <laughs> it's nice to have an actual walkway right. to get into a rooftop. Um, it's always a pain when you just have a flat roof and you're using mm -hmm. ladders and things like that. So we didn't do it on all of them. We just did it on one. Happens, as he had mentioned, it's going to be the one that I'm going to occupy myself as I move back into Sheboygan. Um, and so I figured, hey, this gives us a nice way to get access to all of the roofs if we have to get up there for whatever repairs, membranes, issues, things like that. So are we ending up with any rooftop mechanicals or it's just that, that penthouse and roof deck? No, they're, they're going to be on the ground floor. Um, Steve, if you could go to the site plan, please. Thanks for jumping around here. Yeah, no problem. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, we, have, we have another. Otherwise, I can show you on this plan right here. If you look right here at this one in front of you, what we have right here are some plantings. These plantings are going to continue right along here, and that's where we're going to have just a few air conditioner units on this side of the building, and then on the opposite side, between the fish cleaning station and the sidewalk walkway here, the same will have some plantings over here and a few mechanicals here as well. So we'll have three on this side, three on that side, screened. Yeah, Steve, it's, you're on the right one. Oh, that was uh, right. Uh, yeah, I, this is kind of a revised version of the same thing. Uh, like a zoomed in, but that previous one it showed it on kind of the uh, southwest, sorry about that, southwest side, and then we'll have, um, yeah. So zoom in right, zoom in right there on the left side of our first unit. We had them shown there with we were going to screen that off. Yeah. Yep. Right there. Um, when you say screened, just with. We had, we had landscaping. Or? We were planning on landscaping. Um, 
but I guess if there is a suggestion of something, we could we could work that in. Steve, one um, one of the things that we had worked with previously, and I don't know if anyone's familiar. Well, Dick, you may I think you were there for a while, like on Seven Pen on the corner of Penn and Seventh Street. They had a lot of the mechanicals that were sitting out, and then they had provided like a little screening after a while. That was something that was done in that circumstance. Not saying that's right, but that might be a similar scenario to what we're talking about. Seven yeah. pen, you use that as a reference? Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, I don't I don't know. Um, there there were some mechanicals on the west side of the building, which right. is on Seventh Street. And one of the things that they did was just use like kind of a, a smaller fencing material, similar color that basically eliminated view of those. Mm -hmm. So not okay. saying that that's the right thing, but that's something that the board can consider if there's any concerns. Yeah, those would actually be classified as a vision screen. Yeah, mm -hmm. which would be easy to do. Either we do plantings around, you know, just the three air conditioners, or we mm -hmm. end up to put in. My thought was if they were going to do something like that, you probably grab you know, one of the darker sidings like this, and then you just create like a little tiny, you know, you know, four by four post screen in just high enough to cover the air conditioners. Mm -hmm. And then still do the plantings, either way probably. And do you have sufficient information on those mechanicals to know sizes the yet? Size. Or is that still being developed? Based on square footage of the units, my guess is that we're gonna be probably about a two and a half ton air conditioner, okay. um, the newer models. In fact, I just put one in this week at one of my rental houses. Um, so, I mean, as far as size-wise, they're about this tall, about like this, so it's, you know, about 30 inches by 30 inches, maybe, uh, total. Okay. I think some sort of screening there would be good, Correct. whether it's landscape or a, a fence-type unit. Sure. Um, I, I don't have a strong preference. I just no. think that area, we want to keep it as clean and uncluttered with mechanicals as possible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that seems like something that uh, could be reviewed with staff just to make sure that's uh, given a thumbs sure. up before yeah. you, you I don't know if the, the board wants to hear a little bit about uh, building one also. Uh, with the 21 units, we did sell those units within a year. Mm -hmm. um, the units uh, had an average price of about $285,000, I would say, somewhere around there. They've had some resales since then. They've gone up. I think now they're about three fifty. dollars um, These are going to be marked at four ninety nine, dollars um, but they are quite a bit bigger. Um, we're going to be you know, pushing, I think, 3,000 square feet um, mm -hmm. you know, for them. Yep. I have one for myself, which leaves five to sell. I've shown only two people so far at Building 1. And both people have said that they'd like to be, uh, buy in building two. So my guess is that we're probably going to have these gone pretty quick. So I think the market is uh, ready for something like that. Mind you, building one, uh, all but I think two are homeowner occupied, um, either as first or secondary or third homes. Um, and uh, I think just one person really Airbnbs that everybody else has just always kind of kept it for themselves. Okay. And then I, I did have one design question that uh, I'm Back and forth on what I think. So just curious, your thought process um, on if we can go to the, f the street side elevation, okay. Steve, uh, where to the right side you've got the unit that projects out. Yep. Um, yeah. You've set up a vocabulary of the, the, the orange colored accents at sort of corners and the piers between the units. But as the building steps back, mm -hmm. it doesn't have that. And I'm, I'm looking at the, the perspective view, trying to rationalize that outside corner on that facade not having that treatment. Sure, right here. Uh, versus putting it Do there, maybe as the, the, right here. the oh, corner wrap turned corner the other right way, 90 degrees. Uh, the idea was on the previous design was the orange was uh, circulation. And we kind of translated on this building as well. The orange shows the translation of the stairs. And the circulation to the building like that. Okay. So I think what yeah. you're saying though is on the front side here, we've got the orange separating each unit and this mm -hmm. one didn't have it here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and you're right, I didn't even notice that, but it's, it would be easy enough to do a strip of orange here and then on the inside just to keep that consistency all the way through. And, and it was one, I can see it going either way. It's not a, oh, it has to have it. I was mm -hmm. curious what the rationale was for the, the language you've set up. Mm -hmm. And does that orange circulation language carry through to the big 
sections on each end yes. that are orange. Mm -hmm. So the same idea with, is that the, the central this, corridor there? There's, there's the a single stairs, stair yeah. that goes mm -hmm. up to get you through the building and that's okay. aligned on every, so Toby's unit is a little unique because it's kind of mirrored. So the orange kind of follows that. Um, yeah, you, you take the stair right up and get to all three levels from, from that door. So then on the last unit, we had to flip it because the orientation worked better. And so then the orange ended up moving with it. And that's, that's why it's that way. Because there's no staircase. Here. Yeah, okay. that makes sense. But you know, wouldn't, we could actually look at it to see how would it look with orange right here and here. And maybe that would actually, even though there's not a, a door there, yep. that might look nice. I, I like the rationale of there's there's a reason driving the the color schemes and materials, um, but that one I could see going either way. So if that's something that you wanted to look at differently and bring back at a staff level review, I think I would probably be fine with that either way. I don't know uh, thoughts from the rest of the board, Bob. If you have any thoughts, even though you're abstaining, you're welcome to give your comments. <clears throat> Yeah, I understand what you're saying. I think it looks good the way it is, too. Um, yeah. So I'm kind of in the same boat you are. It's something you could look at doing. If Toby wants to do it. To add the orange. This sounds as if that one is probably going to be in your court, Toby. If you okay. do change it, if it can be just submitted again sure. to, to staff review, just to make sure uh, that... Yeah, we'll take a look at it and maybe send it over to, you know, to That's Steve fine. and uh, Chad just to... Get another then, opinion on it. The only other related question I had was at that corner condition, it looks as if the orange element is projecting out to the street side, but it's flush on the other side. Is that correct or is it projecting in both directions? It was just on the just on the front end, it's projecting out a little bit. Okay. And the the transition joint between those materials, what is that? I'm sorry, so like the, the transition between the materials, what's the detail as you go from one material to the other? They're the same material, so it would just be a finishing edge on both. I guess that, that's my question, whether it's just siding and so it's a, just a butt joint or is there an actual no, physical separation of some sort? We're using a two by six wall cavity and then cool. at the bump out, it's a, like a two by 12 roughly. So there will be a visual shadow line and the material, so change in material is change in plane. But, but that would only be to the street side? On the end of the building, it's flush, if I'm understanding right? Please do. So, that projection and that projection. So right here, Toby, that, that joint, the other orange conditions are projecting out. That one appears to be flush. And they're saying this is the same material, so it's basically just a butt joint. Okay. That's the something is, to, to get just a little separation between them would be great. That. Yeah. He's talking about this line edge right here. When this approaches okay. this, how does that connect? Sure. Okay. I, I see what you're asking now. Um, right here. And we could. Is that wrapping around the corner like that? And is that picture worth out? Thousand words. And is it butt joining into this then? So that comes around. Mm hmm. Actually, like this. To, to, I guess, to be consistent in what we've shown, uh, we would have it um, come out proud of the gray and the white, so that anytime, that anytime the orange is used, it's 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 projecting out. So we could have it kind of come yeah. around that corner and pop out. I think that's what you're saying. Yeah, Instead it's of having three colors. A butt joint. That would as it's drawn. Yeah, yeah, this is a butt joint, whereas everything else is projecting. Yeah. And I think what Eric's saying is that this could then be projected out that same distance as well. Yep. It's just the consistency of the vocabulary you're setting up with what are the, mm -hmm. the treatments of the different materials. Yeah. Or, um, you know, is there a reason to have it different there? Which sure. is you know, fair enough. I'm just curious for the thought process behind it. Can I show you a little sketch of what I, I think you're saying? And then what we would do. Um, so in plan. If this is orange, and this is orange, yes, then we exactly would, we would, because right now it's doing this, and I think that's right. that's where you're coming from. So we would have it project out to create it come around the corner and be consistent with the kind of vocabulary exactly. we've set up. Yeah. Change. Is everyone else following? Yeah, I, I, yeah. I see it. Yeah, I saw what you were saying. 
Mm-hmm. And, and we can do that. I, I think that Great. makes a lot of sense. No problems here. All right. Any other questions, comments, or concerns? Mm. Move for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, further discussion? Yes, the motion, what exactly does that include, Dick? Is it as submitted or with the items that were discussed? With the items that were discussed. And I think that it included screening for the HVAC units at grade, uh, whether it's landscape or fencing. Um, Potentially looking at the projecting corner, whether that's orange or not, at the owner's discretion, but if it changes to resubmit at a staff level. Got it. And the final thing was the, the orange elements to all be projecting elements. Mm -hmm. Does that match yes. everyone's understanding? Yes, it does. If so, uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And Bob was abstaining. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, it is approved. Thank Wonderful. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. It's good. All right. How, how is your time frame looking? When are you planning to break ground? <laughs> so it depends a little bit of it, I think, on uh, state approval of plans and whatnot. Okay. Ideally, uh, we're hoping that we will break ground uh, as soon as we're able to and then um, have the exterior wrapped up as snow just starts to fly so they can work over the winter time and it would be ready to be uh, move in for spring, you know, summer. Super. Well, good luck to you. Thanks, Toby. Thank you. Thank All you. right. All right. Thank you. Any other items of discussion, things people want to talk about? If not, our next meeting is currently scheduled for June 13th, I believe. Yes. I think we're going to have a meeting. Okay. Otherwise, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Bob.